everybody, Don't You For Life here with Boomer for a change. Uh, <laughs> he really wanted to talk about Invoked, so... What's up? <laughs> We're talking about Invoked over Skype. Uh, I'm going to put this under Archetype Analysis. Granted, though, this isn't really a full archetype. The weirdest thing is that this deck is more of an engine than its own archetype. It's got one monster in the main deck, so you can't really play it by itself. And uh, it, it, everybody's talking about it, <laughs> you know, like it, it's the newest big thing that every splashing into just about everything. So uh, how this is going to work is that we're going to each go over the cards and then we're going to talk about the deck as in general and what decks that it might be able to go into. So beginning, we got Aliester, the Invoker, level four, Spellcaster, Dark. 1,000 attack, 1,800 defense. During your first turn, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. Then target one fusion monster you control. It gains 1,000 attack and defense until you end of this turn. And if this card is normal summoned or foot face up, you can add one invocation from your deck to your hand. So, this card is really, really good. He's level 4. He's dark. He's a spellcaster. He has okay stats. I kind of wish the stats were swapped around, but oh well. And the biggest thing is that neither of his effects are once per turn. Meaning you can you if you have three of this guy in your hand and you're going for an OTK, you can discard all three, target a fusion in control, it gains three thousand attack and do a massive amount of damage. Or if you have some way of multiples of summoning multiples of him if they're a normal summon, you can grab multiple invocations, which as you'll see here in a minute is the fusion spell card for this deck and this guy is just so incredibly good he can't be more perfect for an engine uh for an archetype that is more of an engine than it is its own standalone archetype and now we're I mean, gonna he is a oh yeah sorry i mean he is a searcher so <clears throat> i mean yeah. he is a searcher so obviously it's perfect for any particular archetype or engine that you're gonna run yeah and, and it's a very convenient one too because you're not wasting a summon yeah or, well, I mean, it, you yeah. are, but, like, I mean, it you're, goes in a big power place. Yeah, you're getting a lot out of it. It's not like summoning Stratos and turn, <laughs> you know? You're, you're getting your fusion summons and stuff uh, and everything out of that. And, heck, honestly, you're getting a stupid good fusion spell. And I guess we can move on to that. Do you want to say anything more, Boomer? About... No, nope, you pretty much cover the bases. It's a powerful search search card on its own, and the fact that Konami created this is kind of ridiculous. But okay, you know what? I'm not gonna complain. All right, <laughs> next card we've got, and I really hope that the connection's decent because you're kind of staticky on my end. Like I can hear you fine, but like it's kind of weird, and I hope that people aren't having to listen to that from my end. Uh, but uh, eh, you're fine over here. I don't hear any static. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to base it off of if you hear it just fine, they should hear it just fine, so let's do this. Okay, Invocation. Uh, normal spell, and Fusion Summon one Fusion Monster from your extract using monsters from your hand as Fusion Materials. If summoning an Invoked Fusion Monster this way, however, you can also banish monsters from the from your field and or either player's graveyards as Fusion Materials. If this card's in your graveyard, you can target one of your banished Alistair the Invokers, shuffle this card to the deck, and if you do add that card to your hand... You can only use the effect of invocation once per turn. So let me just say, first off, this card it could literally be used for any fusion deck if you if you wanted to. Like it, it can work for any fusion monster as long as their fusion materials are in your hand. However, if you use it for an invoked monster, the fact that you're able to do it from either your side of the field or either player's graveyards are basically DD growing whatever card they have and potentially shitting on a lot of people's decks. Uh, I think it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, I can go into details and like examples as to how you could do that, but I feel like we should save that for the extra deck yeah. monsters and how using invocation with those, like what decks in particular those fusion monsters you're summoning are affecting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'll save it for that. Yeah. But I think the fact that this card is literally a powerful, a powerful mixture of polymerization and miracle fusion mixed in. With the ritual spell, uh, Giski Aquamere, I mm -hmm. think that's fucking insane. Yeah. Like, this card is literally insane. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched GX too much, but there was a, uh, still anime exclusive, sadly, deck that was used by a guy in there, uh, called the Fossil Deck, and it was comprised of nothing but fusion monsters and a spell card called Fossil Fusion. 
in Fossil Fusion was basically this card, but not as good, because it had to use monsters in the player's graveyard, but you were still able to get it stuff out of the graveyard. And this deck reminds me so much of that. I wish we would still get that deck someday, but this card is just a better version of Fossil Fusion. So people who really want that Fossil deck to come out, this is your closest thing right now until Konami finally gives it to us. <laughs> Which is really sad. I just... I mean... I think we can all agree that this card is arguably the best fusion spell card we've ever had in the game. Mm -hmm. And Super I think, think says hi. every, I think, I think every, okay. <laughs> the only reason you can argue that is because it affects, mon it affects monsters on native player's side of the field and it can't be countered. However, if you have a field spell on the field, it literally makes invocation better than super poly. Yeah. But you have to have the field spell. Yeah, and... Which we'll get to that in a moment, yeah, but... Perfect uh, segue, speaking I think... I don't know, man. <laughs> the, the, I, mean, I mean, I mean, just just real quick. Just mm -hmm. even invocation itself, just... The fact that it's a re... Like, the fact that not only can you basically use this card on anything, mm -hmm. anywhere, but the fact that you can recycle it with its own effect, yeah. rather than have to, having to rely on other cards' effect, is just insane. Yeah. Like, it'll uh, so many ways. Yeah. Now, granted, you can still fusion summon with it multiple times. You just can't use the cycling effect multiple times, which is still really good. Uh, being able to just, you know, pick out multiple cards from your opponent's extra deck, fusion summon anything. It doesn't have to be an evoked fusion, but, well, it does if you want to use stuff in your opponent's graveyard. This card is just flat-out amazing. It's $40 for a reason. Gr granted, it used to be, like, oh, pushing 60 but it's finally dropped quite a bit. Uh really really good card i think we've covered everything without having to get to the extra act just yet but basically this deck just basically has a fusion for every attribute minus divine that's the only thing we don't have <laughs> which i feel like they missed out a lot for I mean, elysium <laughs> i mean super poly doesn't have that either but you know yeah most other decks will have a fusion for divine yeah. most yeah that's what i can think of but yeah anyways uh yeah Onto oh, the, back over to you. Yeah, onto the field spell. We have Magical Meltdown, which, honestly, I kind of miss its Japanese name, Reckless Magic Circle, but Magical Meltdowns is kind of easier to say. So, field spell, obviously, when this card is activated, you can add Aliester, the Invoker, from your deck to your hand, and then the activation of your cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated. Also, your opponent's cards and effects cannot activate when a fusion summon is con is well when a monster is fusion summoned this way you can only activate one magical meltdown per turn so right off the bat this card searches your searcher <laughs> you activate it you search your searcher who then searches out your search uh, your spell card that is really 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 good but the big icing on the cake for this card for me is the fact that it provides protection for your fusion summons and a monster when it is actually fusion summoned. So your opponent can't basically negate or chain anything except for like D barrier to the actual activation of the fusion spell like polymerization, invocation, or anything like that. And they can't chain anything when a monster is actually summoned like torrential, bottomless, stuff like that. So you effectively get to summon without having to worry about anything it's a dimensional barrier which is the only real way Bas yeah <laughs> basically any uh staple <laughs> or most any most of any staple traps people play now have just been null and void with these cards yeah it's basically the, the well yeah but i mean <laughs> like what i'm playing like battle trap wise yeah. or like um like, based on, like, before D-Barrier came out, like, there was a ton of cards that people were splashing around, and it's, like, I think now, tra like, battle tra like battle traps, like, when you're attacking, I think it's going to be a bit more decent. I personally will start playing Compulse. Mm -hmm. I don't know about everybody else. I love Compulse. I've always loved Compulse. And Compulse is splashable to use at any point in time, so just Compulsing your opponent's Fusion Monster back into the deck, sure, they can easily bring it out next turn, but, I mean... It's better than wasting, than keeping or you trying attempting to use bottomless or warning and knowing you can't do it because of the field spell. Yeah. Versus compulsory, you can activate whatever you want. Yeah, it, it, this card just m makes you 
have a sense of security whenever you are fusing summoning. It's kind of like a security blanket, I guess, if you want to call it like that. Because that's basically what it is. You can just summon without having to worry about much anything except for a few select cards. And that is what makes this card so incredibly good. It, not just the searching part, but, you know, the whole protection. This card is just one of the best field spells in the game. And it only has two effects. Most of the really, really great field spells have three or more effects. So this card is just, it's just so incredibly good for being rather simple, if you really think about it. Anything more you want to yep. say? Um, I mean... Oh, yeah, Terraforming I just, at 3. Can we just... <laughs> yeah, I mean, can we can we all address the fact that a cer that the the point of this of these three cards alone is to search out the searcher, to search out the fusion card, to activate the fusion card, summon the fusion monster, and then add the fu and then return the fusion monster back to your deck, add the fusion card to your hand, so you can do everything all over again next turn. You got it flipped around. That's just stupid. Uh, you got it flipped around. The monster goes back to hand and uh, info. Right, 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 right. right. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's fine. But yeah, that's just still just this, that's ridiculous. That's just no. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, next card is not very important, but I mean, it's part of the archetype, and it's a decent card. I'm not saying it's a bad card, but like, it's not really necessary unless you're focusing on the engine itself and playing the engine itself. Yeah. But um, look, look at the look law. At the law uh, quick play spell. Tribute one invoked monster, specials on one invoked monster from your extra deck with a different original attribute from that monster's special summon ministry as a fusion summon, and you can only activate one book of the book of the law per turn. So basically, if you if you decided, oh, I'm oh I didn't want to, um, so say you're going up against a uh, mermail, and you decide, oh, but I really want to bring out uh, Makaba. Is that the light guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but... so say you want to do that. Okay, I'm just going to activate invocation and bring out the... Hold on, I got this. Cocytus? Cocytus. I'm really bad with names. Cocytus. You summon Cocytus, you flip Book of the Law, you tribute that, and you bring out um, Makaba Mika Makaba. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names, guys. <laughs> Bear with me on this. But, yeah, basically, if you wanted to go for an attribute that you can summon right away, that's just basically the card that you use. Mm -hmm. Or even if your opponent were to, like try and get rid of that monster in some way, shape, or form. You can use Book of Law to take it off the field and save it from getting destroyed or banished or something. Yeah. Uh, so, the biggest, that. Yeah, the biggest issue with Book of Law is that it's not searchable. It's a really good card, but it's a brick most of the time, and you can't search it out when you do want it. But even then, I still really like it, at least as a one-of, because you can dodge some things. Like right now, uh, uh, with Zodiacs, one of their big power plays is summoning out Dryden. Dryden being this monster who can pop. I mean, it. yeah, you, you can dodge it. You still have a monster, and then oh hey, they just wasted their Dryden effect for the turn. You know, and that's. I mean, I w okay. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's like a brick card, only because it's very similar to Mass Change in terms of, especially. And I just thought of this. I don't know why I just thought of this. This should <laughs> this should have been my first example, but during the battle phase, you're attacking your opponent with uh, Cosatus, and you flip up a go law, and you summon a three K beater, and you attack them in the face with that afterwards. It's like you're just putting more and more damage on board. Yeah, like it's a, I don't think it's a bad card unless you're trying to play a main deck with. The invoked engine just splashed in it, in which case I don't see why you should play Book of Law. I think that's a bit over. Mm -hmm. That's a bit much because you're starting to focus more on the invoked engine, which your main goal would be to focus on the main deck, and the invoked engine is just kind of to give you extra options. Yeah. Uh, the card is really good. It's just. Yeah, you, you basically I, summed up everything. I found it to be a bit bricky, though. I was like, I'd play one, maybe two. Yeah. Like, maybe two. Like, yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I was playing two in my uh, Gem Knight Invoke deck, and it worked fine. But a lot of times I found myself drawing it whenever I didn't want it, and then not drawing think, it whenever I wanted it. <laughs> I think unless you're focusing on an, on uh, trying to get invoked, like the invoked engine itself, mm -hmm. to be used religiously, I don't see why you should play more than one book of law, if that many. Yeah. Honestly, but that's just my opinion. Yeah.
Um, now, if it had a way to, to say on it. yeah, now if it had a way to search it, then it'd be a different story, I think, because it'd be a really good card to go in tandem with Aliester and Invocation. It's just not being able to way to get it to your hand reliably is a bit of a hindrance for it. You, you know what? This this art engine does not need any more searches. I think it's fine. <laughs> it has it has technically two two searches. I mean, kind of three if you're considering invocation to add itself back to the deck and also to hand. The three added, adding cards just I think that's enough. <laughs> I think we're good there. Watch to make a monster who pretends to be Ali Esther who can grab Book of the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, god <laughs> don't give konami ideas right. <laughs> okay so on to the Moving on <laughs> on to the last uh main deck card we have omega summon which by the way i love the artwork of this card but i have not seen this card in person yet i don't get if it's like super hard to pull or something but i have never seen one in irl it's really annoying anyway so this is a trap card target any number of your banished invoked monsters of different names special summon them in defense position so, this card is basically a uh, different dimension, crap, I forgot what it's called, different, dimen ah, different dimension return or whatever, return from a different dimension, I believe is what it's called. Uh, it's a trap card, it's banned, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, that's return exactly what it's called. Yeah, return from a You're different dimension. You're talking to a guy that collects banned cards, okay, I got you, I got you. <laughs> uh, it's basically <laughs> return from a different dimension. But you don't have to pay half your life points, and it only works for invoked fusion monsters, and it also summons them in also, defense. Hmm? Also, they're not destroyed during the end phase. Oh yeah, that too. So they stay on the them. <laughs> the issue with this card, it, it has the same issue as uh, Book of Law, where it's not searchable. And also, you really don't banish your invoked monsters too much, unless you're using one to summon out another copy of it from the extra deck. But that doesn't really come up too often. I think I've done that a total of like twice. Uh, granted, it can be useful in certain builds of the deck if you have an easy and reliable way of banishing them. But otherwise, I don't know if it's, if it's entirely worth to play in most builds. Um, I think you play this card if you're focusing on playing the invoked engine and just focusing on that engine mm -hmm. and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't see this being used nor would it be smart to be used mm -hmm. i think it's way too cloggy yeah I, and way too situational mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie i kind of want to play it as a one of in my invoked gem knights because uh gem knights have a card called crystal rose uh it's a level two and one of its effects is that you can banish a fusion monster from your graveyard to special summon it from your graveyard so that can be really use of the invokes by banishing them special summoning it but Outside of that, I can't really think of very many decks that can really easily reliably banish the invoked fusion monsters. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see the, uh, I don't see the hype with it. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that great. Yeah, almost nobody Too plays it. Honestly, I, I don't. I think, wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a build that plays it. Anyway, so right. now we're finally going to move on to the Extract Monsters, the meat of this archetype. Uh, I do believe this is your turn to start. <laughs> yep, let's do this. Okay, first guy. We're going based on levels, guys, so <laughs> I realize that's how it is for me on my side because I don't have uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro because I suck. But let's go to uh, level four, uh, Invoked Kaliga. I really hope I pronounced that right. You got it. Um, he, is, he is a level four dark beast fusion monster and the fusion materials for it that are required is alistair the evoker and one dark monster and its effect is if a player's monster effect attempts to activate none of that player's monsters can activate their effects for the rest of the turn while this card is based up on the field and each player can attack with only one monster during each battle phase so i mean like okay i gotta be perfectly honest with you Again, I, I mean, I haven't been in the game for a while, nor do I know much of the meta, so I don't know if this card's any good, per se. At least right now. But that's just me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see how, that's, how it's that great of a card, but please, if you have any information that I don't know that can make this card very good, let me know. I have no idea. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a it's average. Yeah, I think it's a decent first turn play if you got nothing else you can do, or if you got another, if you got more of a board you can set up along with it. I think it complements the other Invoked Fusions really well. So if I could need to get this guy and a Raijin out, I think that'd be really really good. Uh, likewise, I think if you have him in some back row, or if you have him and an Aliester in hand, then you can pretty much have a wall, because if you have him in face-up defense, and your opponent can't very well get over him, but they summon like a 1900 beater or something and just try to attack over it, you can just, you know, use Aliester's effect, boost him up to, uh, 2800 defense, and then next turn go off on your plays, because they can't do anything for the rest of the turn. That being said, though... I, the biggest thing that I really like about this guy is that your opponent gets one monster effect. Well, so do you, but your opponent, that's the big thats the big important thing. Your yeah. opponent gets one monster effect for their entire turn, so long as this guy is out. So your opponent, if they aren't being smart or they don't read the full card or they don't think about it, they can really screw themselves over. Uh, I dote against a... Yeah. Zoot- I, I dueled against a Zodiac player who didn't read the full card. He was just, he just kind of thought it was a meh thing. And he uh, normal summoned the uh, rat thing, uh, rat peer, tried to use its effect, sent a uh, Zodiac from gr- deck to grave, and then tried to go through the standard Zodiac combo to spam out a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm like, no, you already used the monster effect. You can't use another one for the rest of the turn. And <laughs> he was dumbfounded. Uh, so... Okay, yes. I want. I, I do want to point something out that I've noticed with some of these cards' effects. I started mm-hmm. thinking about. It, I'm like, wow, this is actually kind of weird. Mm-hmm. The way I see it is, a lot of these uh, fusion, or most of these fusion monsters, kind of counteract uh, a certain archetype in the mm-hmm. game currently with the mm-hmm. same attribute as a sponsor. Like for example, this guy completely, like, sure, it craps on a lot of decks, but it completely shits on Dark Worlds and Burning Abyss, who are both mm-hmm. dark. Which I think is very interesting. Mm-hmm. He, he also kind of hurts... Uh, crap, what is it called? Uh, Shadal also to an extent, because they get yep. one monster effect. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I gotta say, man, I for that alone, I, I think it's a good card, but like, granted, mm-hmm. who's really playing those decks anymore other than maybe Burning Abyss? Yeah, Burning Abyss is the only dark oh. deck that's seeing any play right now. Although Dark Worlds are getting a lot of hype due to that new trap card. <laughs> I don't think the track cards that great, but that's in another video. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I don't want to get into that yet. Okay. You're up. So, Unless you have anything else to say about this. Nah. I love the artwork yep. on all of these, though, I gotta say. <laughs> so next up is Raijin. Well, Invoked Raijin. He's a warrior. He's a wind. Level 5. 22 by 24. He needs Aliester and a wind monster to go into. And then once per turn in your first turn, you can target a face-up monster in the field, change it to face-down defense position. <clears throat> so, this card, and something that you'll notice with a lot of these monsters with the Invoked deck, is that they are super defense-oriented. A lot of them have more defense than they do have attack, and they, and the ones that have effects, with the exception of Purgatrio, have super defense-oriented de- uh, effects. And Raijin is arguably one of the best ones. Honestly, there's only one other guy that's like better than him, <laughs> which we'll get to here in a little bit. And uh, Raijin is good because he is just able to disrupt so much of what your opponent is doing. Your opponent's going through their combo. Oh, hey, use effect. Book them in one of their monsters. Their combo is now done for the turn. And they can't go on with their plays. Likewise, you can use him, target Aliester, book a moon Aliester, flip Aliester over, and then you get a search because Aliester gets it if he's normal or flip summoned. <laughs> Which is really good. Actually, it says if it's if he's foot faced up. So even if you just set him and he gets attacked, you get to search, which is also really good. Uh, so Raijin, he has a lot of plays, not just with the actual deck and what it does, but with what he's able to counteract with what your opponent is doing. And I think he's really good for that. Not to mention, wind is a super common attribute, especially as of right now, due to wind witch being a pretty popular deck. And then of course there's this hard counteract that. Uh, well, you can use, well, Wind Witch, they don't really, uh, honestly, Raijin is used in the Wind Witch deck more often than anything else, because comboing him with Crystal Wing is stupid annoying, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. you, if you're playing, like, a mirror match or something, he's really helpful, because you can, you know, summon him, Book of Moon stuff, uh, so, he has a lot of good because, 
Because I just re- I just remembered another one deck that this could counteract fairly well. Harpies. Uh, I would say not really, only because the only way I could see that actually being like big would be uh to try and counteract a uh, hunting ground, which mm-hmm. it really doesn't because. But um, I was actually thinking Dragoonity. Oh yeah, Drag. Oh god, Dragoonity would hate this card. Yeah. Banishing yeah, your. Yeah. Yeah, yep. banishing their phalanxes and graveyard and stuff like that. <laughs> oh god. Uh imagine Double Legionnaire. Act active attack target uh target access. Um, yep. no. Effect. <laughs> flip down. Your entire turn just screwed. Yep. <laughs> granted, granted, the deck to be most granted most of the decks we stated for so far don't exactly see play, but I'm just using these as examples to why mm-hmm. most of these evoke cards actually kind of racked a lot of decks. Yeah, Dragoonities are still. I'm just, I'm just, I just, I just want to make a point like that. Yeah, Dragoonities are still a pretty popular uh, low tier deck. Um, they haven't seen much play in a while though. That's something mm-hmm. that's interesting though. Uh, so I think we summed up our right, right. thoughts about this guy. They got anything else you want to say? Boomer. Um, no, he's a walking book of noon. It's literally walking book of moon. Enough said. He's a better my stroke. <laughs> he's my stroke during your first turn, basically. You remember my stroke, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So um, onto the water yeah. guy. All right. So. All right. Invoked, Cositus. Cositus. Um, Cositus. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, level six water dragon fusion monster, with the uh, obvious attributes or with the obvious material. Sorry, that you need to summon them. So, uh, cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects, and your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. And this card can attack while in face up defense position. If it does, apply its attack for damage calculation. Which he has eight. I mean. I mean, he's literally, like, to me, he's literally a wall. That's it. Yeah. He, he, he's literally a wall. I just wish he was, like, a super heavy samurai and applied his defense for attack whenever he attacks, but that's just me. Uh, I do really like his stat line, though, having 1,800 attack and 2,900 defense. Uh, I feel like he could be a bit stronger, mm-hmm. maybe 2,000 attack, because he's not going to be running over very much, but... Protection from. But see, I think it's. I think. Hmm? I'm sorry. Like I just think his effect. Uh, his effect is pretty much telling you that he's made just to be a wall, though, Mm -hmm. and to kind of sit on until you can do something else. Yeah. Because honestly, like, like the only like okay, like for me, like the only water deck I can think of that can try and that this card can kind of like I wouldn't say hurt, but like kind of like stop and attract for like the moment would be Mermails for the fact that their effects rely on. Or their, that deck relies on using their effects to get rid of cards, and this card can't be touched by that. And most of their cards are not, or are either like borderline as strong as this monster's defense, or very slightly lower, very slightly higher. So it's a lot harder for them to get over this card in particular. Yeah. At least that's the way I see it, unless they have some like power cap to get around it. Otherwise, it's like you're just sitting on this and waiting for your cards to play while Marmel's just like, well, shit. Yeah, mermails don't have a lot of easy ways to get over this guy. Uh, granted, most builds nowadays play the water kaiju, so they can just drop that on him and get rid of him real easy. Uh, but even then, if they don't have it, they don't have an easy way of getting over him. The only other way I can think of is that a lot of mermail decks play the uh, equip spell card that gives a mermail an additional 800 attack power, uh, just, simply to, just simply to get that LTK a bit easier. Uh, and because it's searchable by Megalo, and nobody plays Abyss Sphere anymore, so they still need a way to search mm-hmm. out something. Uh, well, they still need a way to search out... Uh, well, they still need a target for mer- mer- uh, Megalo, that's what I was trying to say. So, they can play that, get over him, because Megalo becomes 3200. But outside of that, that's like their only way is that equip spell and a Kaiju. And the equip spell can be destroyed by any MST or whatsoever. So... Yeah, he is yep. a very good wall. <laughs> Sadly, the only relevant which one. I think, I which I think is, yeah, which I think is literally his goal in the deck. So I mean, yeah, and, I mean, yeah, yeah, and sadly the it's, only it's relevant, decent. Yeah, 
He, he, I'd say he's the most meh out of all the fusions, if only because there's only one relevant water deck in the past like few years of Yu-Gi-Oh, and that's uh, Mermail's, uh, Mermail Anti, and whatever you want to call it. Uh, and because, well, honestly, he's not the he's the most defensive out of all of them, arguably, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I really wanted to say about him. You're up. Alrighty, on to the fire guy. Invoked Purgatrio. So he's level 7, 2300 by 2000. Needs an Aliester plus a fire monster. And he gains 200 attack for each card your opponent controls, not just monster, <coughs> which is really, really good. And he can attack all of your opponent's monsters uh, once each. And if he attacks a defense position monster, you inflict piercing damage to your opponent. This card fits the uh, super defense uh, trait <laughs> that this entire deck has in the sense that he's more of a comeback card. Oh, hey, you're in a losing position. Your opponent's playing a fire deck or they have a fire monster in graveyard. You activate invocation, bring out this guy, and then just completely <laughs> screw over every one of your opponent's monsters because they are all super weak compared to this thing. Uh, just off of monsters alone, if your opponent has five monsters, he will get, uh, I believe... That's 1,000 attack, putting him at 33, and then obviously attack the strongest monsters. But granted, you know, your opponent won't have five monsters very often, but if you take into account that your that it, this card also counts your opponent's back row and pendulum scales and field spell, this card can get up to some insane amounts of attack power, and it has piercing and can attack all of your opponent's monsters. So... This card, it's one of my favorites, but sadly, this, there's not any fire decks that are relative. Well, wait, no, there's there's one, and that's Infernoid. And generally speaking, they're going to OTK you before you can do anything, and if you try to activate Invocation, they're going to negate it and banish it. So, this is that's not like the best example, but <laughs> uh, this card is really, really good against just about anything else, really. And... I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... If, if, if your deck's definitely based, or if you're definitely basing this off of, like, if you're trying to really, like, bash in and push for game with and a lot of assault, yeah, it's actually a really good card. Um, I mean, my, my only fear with this card is that there's a lot of ways around it yeah. versus some of the other cards. There's a lot of ways to get around it, so, I mean, mm -hmm. unless you have something, like, if you have something to protect it, there you go. Like, mm -hmm. you're set. But, like, it, it's a good card. Like, I'm not, I'm not denying it's a good card. It just, uh, it depends. Yeah, honestly, none of the invoked fusions are bad per se. Just a lot of them are more situational than others, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely, yeah. And I think that's all we got on Purgatrio. Do you want to add anything more? Nope. Uh, all due respect to this card, I have no interest in it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just me, though. I love the artwork. Um, them. <laughs> I do too. It's really sick artwork. Yeah. I'm surprised he's not a dark. Honestly, he probably should have been. Be the, he probably should have been a dark, but I don't know what Kalega would have been then. But oh well. Okay, but like I see, I see why the other one was dark though. Like I get it. Yeah, I don't get why he's a beast though. Why is he not a fiend? Uh, he beats me. I have no <laughs> idea. Instead, Burgess is a fiend. Me. Yeah. Anyway, so on to the next one. Uh, Boomer, this is your go. <laughs> Alright, so we've got... Oh god. Invoked... Mag... Mag... Magalanica? Uh, Magalanica? I've been pronouncing it Ma Magalanica, uh, because it's got the, words, the word mage there, but I don't know. <laughs> uh. I'll just say... Or I'll, yeah, I'll just say Magalanica, and if that's not right, somebody could correct me and call me an idiot. That's fine. Okay, invoked Magellanica. So he is the level eight rock fusion, with the attack and defense of three thousand and thirty three hundred, and the materials required for him is Alistair and an Earth Monster, and that's it. So basically, he's a three K beater that you can kind of just like. For me, I feel like the best. Like I'm just gonna go there and say the best deck this card could counter is Medolce, mm -hmm. and here's why. The only card Medulce's could ever use to get over this card would be Tiramisu, and that's it. And even then, this card will get over Tiramisu even if Chateau is on field. Mm -hmm. So, and, I mean, 
Yeah. And then arguably this card is the best one Wait. for the current format due to Zodiac's the best deck of the format being Earth, and you can pick out a lot of their uh, key combo pieces and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. I just, I mean, not, yeah, not, I mean, yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, and that's another reason why I use Medalches as a reference because Medalches get shit on my cards that banish them and hand traps. Yeah. So, I mean, this card definitely completely craps on that along with taking out your opponent's uh, Zodiac uh, key plays. And, I mean, it's you can never go wrong with a 3K beater, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> like, he, he, he's a beast if you decide you want to use it for that, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he I, I like him. I like him a lot. I think he's good. I think he's... I mean, he, he obviously some of the other ones are just a little bit better because they're a little bit less situational, but this card, I mean, it's a solid card. Yeah. Like, I, I'd play him in most decks. I'd call the Invoke Engine because of the Zodiac. Uh, the Zodiac Engine, or the Zodiac archetype going around. Yeah. And it also helps that there's a lot of Earth decks that are really popular you know, like, heck, a lot of people still love Gear Gia. A lot of people still love uh, Machina's Ancient Gears are about to get their structure deck here shortly. So, and they're all Earth based. Uh, there are so many Earth decks out there, and you can just use this guy to go into just about anything and banish your opponent's stuff in their graveyard, which they can't really do anything about. Dude, Gear Gears literally can't do anything about this card. <laughs> they literally can, nothing. They can make a stell. Get rid of them. Except with <laughs> except with basic spawn traps, but their 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 engine itself, there's nothing they can do. They're just screwed. Yeah. Like if they didn't have their back row, they literally just sit there and just get demolished by this card because there's nothing that they'd be able to do get it to you over it. Mm-hmm. Like this card, I mean, I give you. <laughs> That's no longer a problem. <laughs> oh God. I mean, yeah, I. I uh, can you repeat that? You like faded out to n- uh, non-existence for a second there. I said I just, I just said I like this card a lot. I mean, yeah. it's that's a yeah, it's a I really like it a card. lot. I, I think it's a good card. Yeah. Okay, so on to the next right. one, and arguably the best in terms of its effect, and also typing honestly, invoked Mechaba, the machine light, twenty five hundred attack, twenty one hundred defense. Uh, level 9 of all things. <laughs> Aliester and Invoker plus a Light Monster. Once per turn, either pair's turn, when a Spell Trap card or Monster Effect is activated, you can send the same type of card, Monster Spell or Trap, from your hand to the graveyard. Negate the activation, and if you do, banish that card. This card is stupid good. It is a uh, Ultimate Providence that banishes the card that you negate. <laughs> like what more can you say about it? He's a machine, so you can use. So he has a lot of synergy with machine-based decks. He's a light, so there's countless light decks. Blue Eyes is a big one. Cyber Dragons. Like this thing has so much synergy with so many light decks out there, and it's really, really stupid good being able to just uh, banish anything and negate anything. Granted, though, he's once per turn. Like, like, uh, light sworn who? <laughs> Oh God! The teller knight what? The teller knight what? <laughs> like those cards just on so many of their decks. It's just great. Yeah, and heck, those it's wonderful. Decks, yeah, it's and, just it's yeah. Yeah, and heck, light storms and teller knights could play this card if they wanted to play the uh, invoked engine in them, which is really really good. <laughs> you know, so th- this card has just so much going yep. for it. You know, and. Heck, there's a reason why it's the most expensive in Folk Fusion Monster. <laughs> uh, that and also... He's also, a... it's gorgeous. Hmm? Can we all agree that it's gorgeous? Like, it's a beautiful card. Oh god, yes, the artwork. Like, let's just look at this artwork for a minute. Let's just look at this artwork for a minute and just think, man, come on, make sure of this. Solid yeah. job. There is no rarity it could have been other than this, except maybe LT. Yeah, he's a secret. <sighs> Remember... Remember ultis? Remember when they were a thing? <laughs> Apparently, the reason this card why... would have been perfect. Oh god! Apparently, the reason why we no longer get ultimates is because uh, 
two of the factories closed down uh, yep. in America. Yep. Which really sucks. Yeah, I heard about that. <coughs> so. Okay, let's. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go off track. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to get into that conversation. Yeah, and this video is very sad. Conversation. Yeah, and this video is getting to forty minutes long. So let's talk about the last one. And I do believe it's your turn, so go ahead and get on with it. Invoke. Invoke Elysium. Perfect. A light, a light attribute fairy fusion monster, level ten, with thirty-two hundred attack and four thousand defense. The fusion materials required is an invoked monster and a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck. So. Basically, it must first be fusion summoned with the above fusion materials, and while this card is face up on the field, this card is also a dark, earth, water, fire, and wind attribute. Once per turn to another player's turn, you can target one invoked monster you control, or in your graveyard, banish it, and all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute <laughs> as that monster. Uh, wow. I love this effect. <laughs> I love it. It's evil. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. All. All righty then. So let me get this straight. So here, here's a perfect. Here's a perfect play you can do to your opponent if you if 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 they've done enough or if they put it off on their field and you're basically able to do all the shit whatever the hell you want. So. You go on vacation, you bring out your first fusion, you do whatever you were going to do with that. Worst case scenario, your play doesn't go through. Some Like, if you're trying for an OTK, that doesn't work out. Okay, that's fine. I'll just activate, or I'll just use something, or I'll just use, like, a Book of Law. You know, bring out Elise. You could you could do, uh, no, you can't do Book of Law with this. Yeah. You cannot. <laughs> I was about to say, you okay. can't. Ignore that. Invocation to this. Mm -hmm. Bring this... Bring this, bring this boss out. Uh, just sit on this for 4K. I'd say 4K defense for a turn, and just completely crap on your opponent's entire field that they set up. Yeah. So um, it craps on everything. Mm -hmm. It just nope, too good. Yeah. The downside. It's just this, situational. Yeah. Yeah. This card has two big downsides. Firstly, a lot of time whenever you're using its effect, you're going to be banishing itself, which you generally don't want to do. You generally want to try and banish another invoked fusion. Uh, but most of the time you're going to be banishing itself because, generally speaking, in my experience, whenever I summon it, it's the only monster I have on field, and so I have to banish itself. And secondly, its summoning materials is really hard because you have to have an invoked monster. That in itself is not that hard, but then you have to have another monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, and you, it, that monster has to be out on field. You can't use a monster that's special summoned from the extract that is in graveyard because then it's considered in graveyard and not special summoned from the extract. It's kind of weird. It like resets that card's game state. Uh, so you have to use an invoked monster as either on your field or in your graveyard. I don't think it. I, I'm just going off of how like it's been rolled for me and how YGL Pro won't let me use a monster that's special summoned from the extract in my graveyard. <laughs> Well, no, that no, that makes sense. But like, I don't think it would be that hard to get out if you're focusing on the invoked energy because you also have Xyz monsters that you have easy access to to use as the fusion material. Oh yeah, I'm just so saying, it's like I'm just saying that. In, sorry, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that. No, 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 you're fine. Just, I mean, that's it's not. It's not. Eh. I mean, like, yeah. the summoning could. I mean, the summoning is fairly situational, but like, mm -hmm. it's not as hard as other as other summonings you know like yeah i mean it's it's average like i wouldn't play it personally unless you're playing a full-on deck but i mean other than that it's it's not bad yeah i think it's a really the effects, good the effect oh my god yeah <laughs> <laughs> i i think it's a really good boss monster but i feel like it could have been for the uh, hoops and a hurdle you have to go through to summon it, I feel like it could have been a bit better. Uh, but even then, I still feel like it's a real. I think the I, I think the idea is um, because the effect is the way it is. It's only that way because if you really wanted to utilize him, you have to use it in a full-on invoke deck. Because here's here's the way I see it that could make it a lot easier to bring out. 
-hmm. So let's say you've gone through with your first turn or whatever, and you have your first invoked fusion monster out, okay? Mm -hmm. You activate Book of the Law. You tribute that. You special summon another fusion. Invoke fusion. Then you activate Invocation. You send that fusion and whatever extract monster you summon. And you banish those, and you summon Elysium, and now you have a target in your grave to banish rather than himself if you wanted to clear out your opponent's field. Oh, he so. can, can banish monsters in the graveyard. Holy crap, I never noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? You didn't... I, I, my, my brain just completely skips over that part. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I read the card. You're welcome. I, I'm glad I was able to terrify this with Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could banish your stuff in your graveyard to use as a fact. Yeah, it's a card. Uh, oh god, that makes him a hundred times better in my opinion. <laughs> I thought it had to be yeah. monsters on the field. Oh god, it's what makes Book of Law so good. Oh god, I feel like a dummy. Okay, so enough uh, laughing at myself. I mean, yeah, just mm -hmm. okay. I mean, uh, is there is there very much else we really needed to go over with this particular card, or do we just want to go over the entire archetype? Of, the entire engine as a whole. Uh, I think we're good. Yeah. Which honestly, <laughs> uh, which honestly, the entire engine as a whole is it, it's a really, really, really good engine. Yeah. It's really good. It, it's super like, splashable. You can throw oh it God. in just about anything. Uh, I, I say just about everything because there are some decks that it just does not work with. I tried it with Cubics. It does not work with Cubics. <laughs> On paper, it sounded like it would, but uh, in practice, it did not. Uh, but, like, you, tr Terraforming's still at 3, so you can easily get to Magical Meltdown. And then you just have so many ways to get to your searchers and search out your more searchers and stuff. It's stupid. I'm going to wait for some... Hmm? I'm just waiting for somebody to make a full-on invoke deck that is so fucking powerful that every card in this deck gets banned because of it. Because <laughs> it's probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to find it. Yeah. And it's going to be upsetting, and I'm going to be really sad because I think the idea for this engine was be was for that exact reason, which was to make it an engine, unless mm -hmm. you wanted to use cards like Elysium, in which case you have to you have to make it... make or If you want to use Elysium very well... You have to build the invoked in engine around it and it alone, rather mm -hmm. than splashing into their decks. Which, in my mind, it's like, oh my god, this is what they tried to do with Dragon Rulers and failed to realize that Dragon Rulers together is just so fucking stupid. Yeah. Because the original idea for the Dragon Rulers was that those particular cards were supposed to be support cards for their particular attribute uh, archetypes. And it's like, they, yeah. instead of doing that, people were like, wait, why don't we just bring all the Dragon Rulers together and just do that for <laughs> we'll back? I'm like, no, don't ruin it for us. Oh, God. Yeah. I want my Redox back from Adulty, damn it. I miss it for my Nordics. <laughs> uh, now, that being said, though, about Dragon Rulers, I have a few ideas for what, we could, what Konami could do to bring them back, but uh, that's a topic for a different video. Now, in regards to Invoked, I feel like that they work best with other fusion decks because Magical Meltdown provides protection for all fusion summons, not just Invocation fusion summons. So I highly recommend trying them out with Gem Knights. Gem Knights work so well with this deck. Uh, I would also recommend trying it out with like Heroes and other fusion-oriented decks. Heroes, Shadals. Uh, if you want to build a Blue Eyes Ultimate Turbo deck, I guess you could do Blue Eyes too. <laughs> I just want to, I just, just want to point out I've tried it with Medolce and I really like it. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to build it in Satellar Knights because Satellar Knights have so little room unless you decide that you want to take out half their back row. In which case, you can do that and put the Invoke Engine in. But I mean, for me, it's like yeah, there's some decks where you really have to think about it. Yeah, and be like, is it really worth taking out part of this card to protect the engine, to protect the deck itself, in order to use this engine? Like, is it worth it? Because this deck, like this, like this archetype, or the I'm sorry, this engine in particular, very much makes me think that in most cases, this is more offensive than defensive. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna want to splash in a more offensive deck than kind of mellow 
mm-hmm. decks. Like for me, Satara Knights, sure, they're really powerful, but like they definitely lean back and forth between offensive and defensive because they like to clear the field. Mm-hmm. But you also rely on a lot of back row to kind of protect them because they're weak monsters individually. Yeah. And I guess versus like, like uh, Medulce, basically just spamming and spamming and spamming. Yeah. Or like, uh, yeah, most of the fusion decks, but you're just spamming and spamming and spamming. And you can get away with getting rid of any back row to kind of get more offense on, out there. So, I mean. Yeah. Now, on that note, because of how. Yeah. Now, on that note, because of how small the actual archetype is, you could probably splash this into your side deck and stuff. You know, like, uh, oh, maybe you're not, you might not have room for it in your main deck, but you could probably squeeze it into your room in your side deck, which is an idea. <clears throat> don't know how good of an idea it is, but it's an idea. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Alrighty, so this video is getting to 50 minutes long. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this archetype analysis with Boomer. Uh, <laughs> first time he's been in one. Uh, give him a round of applause, it I guess. Was, it was solid. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, we ought to do more yeah. of this. I don't, you're the, I don't know what's beeping. Show in all the, the love. I don't know what's beeping in the back of your, uh, like, like in your room or something. But I guarantee you, there's gonna be like five, at least five comments about it. <laughs> like, I, I keep hearing a beeping. It, it sounds like a, uh, what is it? A smoke detector that needs to be like a new battery in it or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, D- did I nail I'm it at that point in my life where I just I tone it out. <laughs> 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 All right. But, yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tolerating that beeping. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. See you all later and peace out. Boomer, anything you want to say? Uh, bye. <laughs> See y'all later.